What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 12 of our data analysis with Python and Pandas tutorial series. In this part what we're going to be covering is using uh, comparative operators on or comparison operators on a data frame to either redefine it or generate a new data frame. So what I mean by that is using the comparison operators like greater than, less than, greater than or equal to and all that kind of stuff. And so the idea here is that you know, maybe you want to find all the data in a data frame where one of the columns has data that's greater than, I don't know, 50. Okay. Uh, so this is that's what we're going to be covering here is how you can do that. Now, at the same time as we're doing that, we're also going to talk about how you can use a method like this to handle erroneous data. So uh, before we just start getting rid of all data that, uh, you know, goes to this sort of uh, methodology that we're about to use, let's talk a little, just real briefly about, you know, wh when do we have the right to get rid of data. So a lot of times scientists get themselves in trouble because they have an, a hypothesis and all of the data fits that hypothesis except for maybe one data point. Uh, and then, so it's kind of, you know, tempting to just, just erase that data point. Well, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about getting rid of data that is clearly an outlying erroneous data point. So. Uh, here we're going to use an example of where we are 100% certain that it's an erroneous data point. Now this is just an example. Another realistic scenario where I've had to do this is uh, with stock prices where maybe the price was momentarily reported as being zero dollars or something like that. Uh, that's erroneous data. You need to be able to handle that, that data. Obviously that never actually occurred. In this case we're going to use um, a scenario where you've got a bridge and um, you know with, with as a bridge ages uh, the integrity of the structure weakens and then as it's under load it you know moves a little bit more <clears throat> uh, you know let's say down when you've got let's say you've got 15 semi trucks going over the bridge that kind of weighs down the bridge a little bit so it's going to move so we're going to use um, a just just kind of an example let me pull up this lovely picture I drew and the way that we we're going to do this is w assuming that we're doing you know using like a distance sensor. So we've got this distance sensor under this lovely bridge here, and what a distance sensor does, it, well, there's many types, but let's say we're using an ultrasonic distance sensor. It shoots sound waves up, bounces off the the um, the bridge, comes back, and comes back into the receiver. So it shoots out this trigger into the receiver, and what it does is it measures the amount of time that it has passed. Okay. The speed of sound is a constant, okay, that never changes, so, at least here uh, in this example. Uh, so that's never going to change, so then given the amount of time that's passed by, we can say that, dis the, that time with the speed of sound, now we know exactly how much distance was traveled in entirely, we divide that by two, and bam, we've got the distance between the distance sensor and the bridge. Okay, so that's what we're going to say that's our example. So then, in our uh, data, let's say, uh, I'm trying to think what I want to do. Uh, you want to keep this, this uh, script, you know, keep it around. Don't just get rid of it. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're not actually going to use it. We're going to start writing our own information. So um, you can do what you want, but I'm going to get rid of this code. You can go ahead and just leave the imports up there, though, because uh, we'll be using matplotlib and stuff. We don't really need pickle anymore, though. Actually, I'm just going to leave them there. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, head to the link in the description again, uh, or you could try to copy and paste this really quick. We're just, this is just some sample data that we're going to populate in here. The idea here is, and for anyone who doesn't understand, the link for this tutorial, the text-based versions in the description, click on that, and at the very, very top there's some text, scroll down, and you should find the, the sample code here. Uh, so we've got bridge height, and this is just a quick dictionary, basically, we're measuring the bridge height, so we're just collecting measurements, 10.26, 10.31, and so on, and then all of a sudden we have this random, you know, 6212. So, and then after the 6212, we're back to 10 and, and so on. So, uh, in, in this case, with this bridge, we could, you know, did the bridge maybe get abducted by aliens or something momentarily, maybe, who knows. But we could go back and, and look physically at the bridge and see, oh, well, the bridge is still there, this must therefore be bad data. Okay, the, maybe what happened is like with an ultrasonic sensor, maybe a leaf was falling down and the sound wave hit that leaf and then it bounces all around until finally it bounces off the bridge back to the receiver and the distance traveled for that sound wave really was that, that much times two. So um, anyway, this would be erroneous data and given that we know the bridge hasn't collapsed, hasn't disappeared, 
Um, <laughs> and uh, we, we've continued getting regular data, we can very logically say this is just erroneous data, right? This wasn't a data point that occurred and doesn't, you know, just simply doesn't conform to our hypothesis. It's literally bad data, okay? So how might we discover this bad data? Because, I mean, we can visually look at this with our eyes, be like 10, 10, 10, 6,000, you know, that's outrageous, right? And we, we make that claim that it's outrageous, first of all, because it's much larger than all the other numbers, but also the distance from this number to this number, and just kind of we do a quick little average in our own heads, and we just we automatically de detect that as, a, as an outlier. So um, what we can do is, first of all, we can say df, uh, df equals pd dot data frame, and we're going to convert bridge height uh, to that data frame for us. And then we can just do a simple df.plot and then a df.show. Oops, <laughs> plt.show. That's going to give us an error. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. plt.show. Okay, so right, and then obviously we kind of saw that one coming that it would be outrageous. So we'll close this out. Uh, so now the next question is how might we automatically detect this? Well, the first thing that we can do is use standard deviation, okay? Because that's how we're kind of detecting it on our own, is we're, we're finding this to be way out of line, both in just the typical scale, right, but also in standard deviation. None of these other numbers are deviating as much as this one, not even close. So what we can do is we can say df, and we'll create a new column for std, uh, that is, we're going to say equal to pd.rolling underscore std, and we're going to do the std of df meters, and you can't really do a 1, so we'll do a 2, and then what we can do is print df. We don't really need to plot it at this point, but that's okay. So anyway, this is our standard deviation, so clearly we're picking it up. We're picking up double standard deviation here, but that's okay. So obviously we've got, you know, not a number because that's not a valid standard deviation, or you can't do it one for that first value. Then we got very small, very small, very small, gigantic, and then back to the regular is another gigantic, and then small, small, onward. So what we can do is uh, we can come down here, and what we can say is, first of all, what we, you know, we can see that visually the standard deviation is too big, uh, but then how do we decide beforehand... Uh, because basically what we're going to do is, is we're going to say, okay, if, you know, we're going to redefine this data frame using comparison operators saying, hey, if the standard deviation is greater than, you know, x, uh, get rid of whatever points have that standard deviation. Well, first we have to figure out x. So how will we actually derive x? So what we'll do is you would, you would take basically the, the, the average standard deviation for the entire data frame. Okay, so you could do something like this. You could say um, df underscore std equals df dot describe. And we'll just do that first. Let's print df underscore std. And this will um, give us a bunch of stats, not just the std, but you'll see why I did that in a moment. So you have this value, std, and the average for the entire set is 2067. So that is less than, you know, three times the uh, standard, de oh, actually t two times the standard deviation for, for those points, right, 4385. So we can close this out, and what we want to do next is, so dfstd is not just df describe, it's df describe, and then not only that, but let me run that one more time, actually. Um, let me move this over. The average we're looking for, you could use the average STD since we do have an STD column, but we're actually looking for the meters specifically. So we would say that describe meters column row STD. Okay, so uh, we'll close everything. And we would say, right, meters and then STD. Okay, so that gives us that value now, and there it is. 2067. So then what we can do now that we have that dfstd is we can redefine the data frame. We can say df equals df where, okay, this is kind of gets a little funky, but this is how it works. Df where the df uh, s, let's see, did we capitalize? I can't, even, I can't even remember. Yeah, it is capitalized. std is less than the df std. 
Now, you might want to say, you know, you, you might want to allow for something higher than generally the average STD. Um, but if you do have an outlier, obviously we have our outliers, so it displaced the average STD significantly. But under most circumstances, you'd probably have something like that, or maybe like that, uh, something, something along those lines maybe, or you might even use the 75% standard deviation that you could get with the standard deviation column that we got. But this is just a really quick example of how you might go about doing this. Uh, and so now you can do that, and then we can print the DF. So we can see the new data frame. And we're still plotting the uh, standard deviation, so we can get rid of that in a moment here. But you can already tell there's no giant jump there. So then, um, so df.plot, we can df meters dot plot and uh, there you have it obviously there's still kind of a jump here but if we look at the values not really <laughs> these are like very small numbers so anyway uh, that's an example of how you know you might get rid of erroneous data but also more importantly is this line here where we use a you know a comparison operator to redefine the data frame of course you don't have to redefine it you could have said df2 and then df2 meters plot or something like that uh, but this, you can basically select only columns that meet certain criteria and get that returned back to you. So it's a kind of nifty way of uh, using comparison operators and, and applying logic to the data frame and, and you know, what you want returned back to you. Anyway, uh, that's it for applying comparison operators and finding erroneous data. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, as always, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.